All right. Um, one thing I do want to do. Hi. Hey. When uh, um, people come in, let's give them an, uh, a round of applause, like now. <laughs> Welcome. All right, good, good. Welcome. Welcome. It's like a sushi restaurant, right? All right, guys. Um, let's get going. My name is oh, my name is Arson. I am an SEO. That's uh, my Twitter handle. If you guys have questions, concerns, comments, compliments, that's the Twitter handle. Hello. Woo. Woo. All right, I'm also the founder of Top Hat Rank. We're a search and social marketing agency out of Los Angeles. Actually, we're not in Los Angeles. We're in Sherman Oaks, close enough. Uh, today, I will be talking to you about SEO 101, uh, best practices for 2018, 2019. We're gonna cover four topics. Current state of SEO, what the hell is the knowledge graph, don't overthink voice search, and uh, welcome. 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 They hate me. Uh, and we're going to do SEO tips for 2019. You guys excited? Yes. Louder. For the people in the room, hello, welcome. Sorry. Oh, you guys are getting tired? OK, now. Welcome. OK, awesome. OK, here we go. Uh, so SEO in uh, 2018 kind of sucks. Uh, we've had <laughs> updates on updates on updates from Google. Every single one of these, you know what, let me get my, oh, we don't have a pointer here. So every one of these little, uh, um, in the graph, the diamonds, the red diamonds, and the Google logos, those are updates from Google every month. Take a look at that. Take a look at uh, uh, February. This guy, uh, uh, a blog on WordPress, had, no. I went a little too far, here we go. Um, back in February, this guy, a blog in WordPress, was ranking 270, welcome, uh, 277,296 keywords in the top 10 pages of Google. Uh, with 21,900, almost 22,000 of those keywords being in the top three positions. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Welcome, everybody. Come on! All right, this will be the last time. All right, so, um, let me. So, 22,000 uh, keywords in the top three positions back in February. Uh, take a look at what's happening with them in August. 84,921 keywords across the first 10 pages, 5,200 keywords in the top three positions. Big hit. Let's take a look at what it did to his traffic. He went from 2.1 million visitors per month to 567,000. Um, look at these numbers. He lost 16,000 keywords, almost 17,000 keywords in the top three positions. He lost 183,000 keywords in the top 10 pages and he lost 1.5 million visitors. He was sad. And it all started kind of with this, right? Back in uh, uh, March, Google came out with this really interesting tweet, right? Uh, we have updates, we do them all the time. This update is gonna screw everything up for you. Um, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, these were all updates from Google, confirmed and unconfirmed. What stands out to you guys? Quality, the word quality is constantly appearing, right? Google wants quality. So what is quality? How does Google gauge quality? What are the quality signals for Google, right? Um, quality can be broken down, and quality signals can, uh, signals can be broken down into two kind of categories. Uh, uh, from a UX, UX perspective, uh, Google judges your site's quality by speed, accessibility, security, are you HTTPS, all of that, right? And then there's quality from an information perspective. Uh, uh, how your topics are focused, what's the quality and depth of your content, uh, how well you're satisfying the query, architecture and organization. All right now, Sarah is gonna be speaking after me here. Uh, she will do a deep dive into that second point, all right? So stick around. 
Now, if you were here last year to see me speak, who was here last year to see me speak? Hey, guys. Awesome. Thank you for coming again. Um, you guys saw these slides. This was at the end of my presentation, right? Uh, I hate to be the guy to say I told you so, but I told you so. Um, I told you you should be HTTPS. I told you you should be mobile friendly. I told you you should optimize your URL silos and content, make sense and be logical. I told you that uh, you need to make your site fast and then faster again, right? And this is what was bringing down traffic and rankings um, in these updates. The other part of these updates, and this, is, this was a part of the update uh, um, in September, this latest update, and this was EAT. Expertise, authority, and trust, right? Google wants content to be quality. It wants to, the content to be written by somebody who's an authority on the topic. You guys can hear me, right? Perfect. All right, so what is EAT? What is, and EAT can be broken down into two. So Google wants to, and this is from Google's Quality Raiders guidelines, 180 something pages of guidelines that Google puts out to its Quality Raiders. So these are human beings who sit down with this guide and go through websites rating them, right? Life sucks for them. But uh, uh, download this guide. It's 180 pages. Don't print it. Save a tree. But download it onto your phone, tablet. Take it with you to the bathroom and just read through it. You'll become a good SEO. Uh, but what Google wants to see, and this is directly from the Raiders guidelines, right? Master content. Uh, 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 Google wants to make sure that you have ample, ample enough. All right. uh, you have uh, uh, a content that satisfies the needs of the user. So making sure that the person who's looking uh, uh, for a, who's performing a query will land on the page that satisfies that query, right? Uh, the content needs to be written by an expert, needs to be authoritative and trustworthy. Uh, the website needs to have positive reputation. So another signal, hint at another signal, right, from Google, uh, a positive reputation. So make sure that you don't have any like negative reviews, uh, uh, especially on websites that Google trusts, right? Um, and they want to make sure that you are who you are and you're legitimate, right? And signals of a legitimate site is the one that has an about us, a contact us, a customer service, uh, a, a privacy policy, terms of use, and all that stuff, right? Let's continue. Um, it has enough supplemental content, or we call it supporting content, content that supports the overall topic. Uh, you have you allow users to easily locate information. So this is again architecture and inf information architecture and how content is organized on your website. Uh, the website is maintained, edited regularly and frequently, that your website is not stagnant, right? Um, again, these are quality rater guidelines. The good news for now, for now, is that most of this applies to sites that can potentially negatively impact a person's health, happiness, or wealth, right? So like, uh, if you write about financial advice, this applies to you. If you write about uh, uh, symptoms of asthma, this applies to you, right? Um, now, if you're like a DIY blogger, this really doesn't apply to you, right? You don't have to be an expert to be a DIY blogger, right? So what does this all mean for you guys, right? Like, why, why, why is Arsene telling me all of this, right? Well, it's, it's, it's very important to know this because Google's been making a shift. Google's been making a shift away from traditional SEO, uh, and this is one of the moves that Google is taking to making sure that they're cleaning up their results, that Guys like me from eight years ago are not getting away with cheap practices to rank websites when they don't make sense, right? Um, and it all started with the knowledge graph. The knowledge graph is uh, where we're gonna go next. Uh, because on the web, things may not appear as they seem, right? I am the creator of Facebook, believe me, right? I can put this up online, no one's gonna stop me. I can put my SEO knowledge and power to make this rank. And to make it come up, I mean, it's going to be really hard and expensive. But uh, and when people search founder of Facebook, like we see in the shot, right? I can have my name and information come up if I'm clever enough. But is that true? No, right? In comes the knowledge graph, and I'm going to play a little video here, and hopefully this will work without technical difficulties. Mm. Wouldn't it be amazing if Google could understand that the words that you use when you're doing a search, wouldn't well, it be amazing just words. if Google could understand whoa, 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 the words whoa, whoa. they use when you're doing a search? Well, they aren't just words. They refer to real things in the world. Let's do one of these. A building is a building, and an animal is an animal. 
Wouldn't it be amazing if Google could understand that the words that you use when you're doing a search, well, they aren't just words. Can you guys hear that? They refer to real things in the world. That a building is a building, and an animal is an animal, and that they're not just random strings of characters. If we could understand that those words are talking about those real world things, then we could do a better job of getting you just the content that you want off the web. The way Google is trying to build information about real world connections is by building a knowledge graph. The knowledge graph is about here, collecting right? information about right. objects in the real world. The object could be a person, could be a book, could be a movie, and many other types of things. For example, for a famous person, we collect relevant data about them, such as their date of birth Camera? or how tall they are. We can also oh. connect that person to closely related objects in the knowledge graph. Let's say you're interested in Renaissance painters, or how about how many women have won the Nobel Prize? By understanding the relationships between things, be it between painters in the Renaissance or women in the Nobel Prize, Google can do a better job of understanding what it is exactly you're searching for. One of the first features we are going to introduce, which applies the knowledge graph, is a panel next to the web results. When you have a question to answer, others may have come to Google already okay, to search so for the same thing. We're Google stop can jumpstart your research process by combining the information. So in 2013, Google introduced the knowledge graph, right? And it's Google's brain, basically. And it's a way for Google to map topics, concepts, and entities together, right? Does that make sense? Right? So Google basically now can associate a lot of really cool stuff. So let's resume this presentation. Okay, so, and you guys have seen the knowledge panel, right? It appears on that side of the search results, right? Um, and it appears at different times for different queries, right? Um, and the knowledge graph has millions of entries uh, and they're real world, world entities. And these are some of the entities that knowledge graph contains and maps relationships between, right? So if we take a look at this, this is an actual, uh, 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 diagram from a patent that Google filed back in 2013. Um, and this is how they're mapping out entities. Can you guys see all that? Okay, so in the middle is Tom Hanks, right? And Tom Hanks is mapped to Rita Wilson because that's a spouse, right? And they were both in the movie uh, uh, Larry Crown, right? Uh, and then Larry Crown, we're here on the bottom here, uh, Larry Crown, was a story by Tom Hanks. So the knowledge graph took all these entities and mapped them together, right? And it works on two different types of entities, explicit and implicit. And this is where I want you guys to really pay attention and, and, and get a grasp of this. Implicit entities are derived from text on page. So Arson is the creator of Facebook. I published that on the web. Google crawled it, picked it up, and using, uh, uh, um, Processes like natural langu language processing understood, try to understand what's on that page. But it's not always factual, right? Explicit entities are obtained from structured markup on a page. They come from the semantic web and they're derived, uh, um, essentially they're facts, right? They're, they're confirmed facts. And when you're optimizing for entities, you have to make sure that your implicit and explicit are matching. Right? So let's say I want to rank for uh, arson is an awesome guy. Right? This is all implicit. Right? So in my post screen, I'm going to write my title, arson is an awesome guy. I have my heading, how awesome is arson Rabinovich. And uh, then I have my, my piece of content. Right? So I'm laying this out, proper formatting on page, telling, giving Google all the signals. Right? So I have my name in the title, I have my name in the H1, and I have my name in the first sentence of the first paragraph of the page. Right? Uh, and then if I continue with it, I'll add H2s and, and content and LIs and, and, and ordered lists and all of that, right? To give context and support my overall topic, right? Then we have to make sure that the explicit ma matches that information. We have to justify why arson is awesome, right? Um, and explicit comes, Google picks that up from, not just Google, uh, other search engines pick that up from schema markup. Uh, 
It's called schema markup, sometimes schema. It's a vocabulary of micro data, uh, tags. It helps mark up, pa mark up pages and help search engines understand what your page is about. And it's a col collaborative effort from Google, Bing, Yandex, and Yahoo, and is not too difficult to understand. And I gave you guys a, a, a link there to learn schema. But here's my really creative way of explaining what schema is, right? So uh, think of your website as the mama bird. Think of the information you're presenting uh, uh, to uh, search engines as the food that the mama bird feeds its baby birds, right? But it's marked up with schema. So through the process of regurgitation, <laughs> Google being in Yahoo, uh, Yandex, and Yahoo fell out of the nest there. Uh, um, but uh, Google, Bing, and Yandex are fed information from the site. And it's easier to digest that information when it's been pre-chewed for you, right? So what we're doing with schema is we're chewing it up for Google so Google easily understands what each page on your site is about, right? This page is a recipe. This page is a video. This page is a blog post. This is a local business. This is a person. This is a cheeseburger, right? Everything can be marked up. This is the markup for, uh, again, this is getting explicit, right? This is microdata markup for a person, right? For Arsene Rabinovich, the first arrow, you guys see that? That's pointing to a person's schema vocabulary. The second arrow is pointing to organization. I am uh, uh, the founder of Top Hat Rank, right? And then same as the third arrow, same as markup, connects all the dots for the knowledge graph. It maps all of my entities together, right? And I'm making that available on a page that talks about me. So when Google cr crawls through or Bing crawls through this, they will understand that this page is about Arson, who Arson is. And look, here are all the links to Arson's other properties, right? Make sense? You guys with me? Good. Um, this is another way to present schema, and that's through JSON-LD. So very similar, but different. Uh, JSON-LD JSON -LD is the preferred way uh, uh, right now. It's the fastest way for Google to process your schema. Uh, and recently, Bing started processing it too. So you guys should be safe with JSON-LD. There's plugins that do this. I will have links for this later. Uh, there's a few other settings in your WordPress uh, uh, admin panel, uh, in, especially inside of uh, uh, Yoast, to get the explicit right. Um, so in the in the screen, we're showing you uh, how to tell Google what you are, right? For the knowledge graph, your company, company name, and the company logo, right? And that's in search appearance. Uh, and then for the company or for a person or whatever, again in 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 uh, Yoast, you click on social and you get all of your properties, and that's automatically going to apply that same as markup. But that's not where you stop, right? Because again, I can publish whatever I want, I can mark it up, and doesn't mean that it's true. So we have to validate this. We have to create third-party validation. And we need to show that other places online, trusted places online, are saying that arson is awesome, right? Um, and are they authority on the topic of arson being awesome? So how do we get that third-party validation? So there's authority websites all over the place. Um, you've seen this. Wikipedia pull, uh, 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 Knowledge Graph pulls data from Wikipedia, from IMDb, depending on what kind of search you perform. Uh, if I'm looking for a local business, I'm, it's pulling from Google My Business, right? Um, blogs work, citations, uh, Google My Business listings, and Wikipedia pages. Um, so remember these from earlier, right, these knowledge panels? Take a look where things are getting pulled from. Um, so for this search, Bitcoin IRA, it's a Wikipedia entry on the top, and that's Google My Business on the bottom, right? That's being pulled into the knowledge panel. And then we can also see knowledge panels being formed from uh, websites, right? So you see this knowledge, knowledge panel. So I search for knowledge panel, and this is the result. Uh, uh, Google Images comes up on the top. So Google forms, Knowledge Graph forms a result from Google Images, and then from Small Biz Trends, which is a website, authoritative website online, right? So are you guys still with me, yeah? OK, so is this all making sense, right? Resonating? Good, OK, awesome. So this will always lead you into voice search. If you remember my talk from last year, we talked about uh, uh, featured snippets a lot, right? And how to optimize for them and how it leads to, to voice search. Um, well, voice search is here, guys. Uh, we have, so this is data from uh, earlier this year, because nothing else came out so far. Uh, so it's on the rise. Uh, a lot of people are using voice search. One of five searches on Android app right now or come in the USA are coming from speech. 40% um, of consumers use voice search daily. 
Uh, Gardner gave it 30% of all searches will be voice. Uh, Comscore says 50%, right? So like two different numbers, but kind of gives you an understanding, right? This is not something you want to overlook, right? So this is where all kind of ties in together. We're going to talk about, in this section, we're going to talk about speech, uh, uh, search manual readers guidelines, how Google Assistant at home handle different queries, and how to optimize for these queries, right? Uh, in 2017, Google released their publisher's uh, voice search guidelines. So same as the, 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 the search guidelines for manual readers, right, for organic results. This is the same, but much shorter, and for voice search. So you guys can download it here. Uh, but essentially, what it does is it gives guidelines on how to rate results, right? For information, satisfaction, accuracy, length of the answer, uh, 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 how easy it is to understand, and then how it's pronounced, which is not our problem because we're not developing it, right? Um, so when a search is performed, when the manual reader performs a search, they have to rate it, whether it fully meets, highly meets, moderately meets, or slightly meets, or fails to meet the query. Uh, another thing that we have to be mindful of is the length of the result. We don't want it to be too short or too long, but just enough to give enough information. Um, as a s side topic, um, if you guys are interested, this is pretty cool stuff. Uh, basically, Google is building Terminator. Uh, so it uses, it uses sentence compression through something called long short-term memories, uh, which are building blocks of a recurring neural network, right? Uh, really just read it, right? But this is how Google basically tries to understand what you're writing on the page and how it's gonna compress like multiple sentences or paragraph into a smaller one with like its brains, right? Uh, grammar, grammar is super important for these results as well. So as you're writing your content and you're trying to get this content to rank, you wanna make sure that it's grammatically correct, right? Um, good, it landed, okay, I like it. <laughs> So let's take a look at let, let's take a look at how this all kind of works together, right? So, and where the results are, are getting pulled. So if I ask my uh, Google Assistant uh, who plays Rick Grimes on The Walking Dead, Google Assistant is going to say Rick Grimes was played by Andrew Lincoln, right? Uh, and we perform the same search in mobile, and that's a knowledge graph result, and it's an entity result. This is an explicit entity that Google Knowledge Graph is pulling into result because it has mapped this actor to the series, right? Then we ask Google, how many Walking Dead comics are there, right? And Google responds, the Walking Dead is generally broken into six issues and blah, 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 right? Uh, there's the result that Google is speaking from. That's a featured snippet. This is an implicit result, right? And then I ask Google, where can I buy the Walking Dead comics? And here's something interesting that happens. Google will assume that I'm looking for a store to walk into, even though the result doesn't have a, a, a local listing and my intent does not necessarily mean that I want, my intent of search is not necessarily saying that I want to walk into a place, right? Uh, so even though the organic result shows me a shopping feed on Amazon, Google tells me that there's a few Barnes and Nobles around me, right? And that's being pulled from the maps, right? This is, again, an explicit result, but this information is being pulled from Google My Business instead of Wikipedia, right? You guys can do all this. You don't have to know code. This is super easy. This is where it gets fun, right? Uh, so this one, we talked about this. Uh, get your entity listed in one of these places, right? Uh, get into Wikipedia, get into IMDb. Uh, and this is especially for a person or a brand Right. If you're optimizing, if you're one of those, you want to get into any of these places. Um, and again, keep in mind, markup is, again, super important. Just because you're in Wikipedia, you still have to do all this markup. Uh, uh, so it helps with entity detection because the knowledge graph is built off of schema vocabulary. Right. So you need to create uh, secondary entries where Google can map things like uh, uh, your, your, your social profiles. Right. Uh, this is the same as markup that we talked about earlier, and that's pulled into the search result. And then there's a there's markup for a phone number. Again, schema markup. We talked about this. You guys clear on the schema, right? Okay, awesome. Uh, entity knowledge graph box card uh, or card results, right? Uh, again, so URL optimizing, so getting URL into a, 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 a knowledge graph and getting the same as markup is super important because it's going to get all your social profiles on there. And this is good for like queries like, uh, um, you know, you're asking Google uh, Walking Dead's Twitter account, right, to show you that. 
that's how Google will pull that because it associated that already. Uh, and again, an example of how uh, uh, it's marked up with both JSON-LD and uh, just regular markup. Um, take a look at this URL. This is search guides from Google. The information is there. Google actually walks you through on how to do all of this. So it's pretty interesting. And again, you don't have to know any code to do this. This is super easy. Um, some interesting information on schema for you guys to pick up that. Uh, we have schema markup generator. Again, you don't have to know code. You can just put, fill out a form and it's gonna spit out a code for you to put up into your site. Uh, structured data testing tool to test your schema. Don't put up bad schema. Uh, and then there's uh, Bing's guide to markup is also really good. Uh, very important note on schema. Google does not like when you mark up stuff that's not on the page. So you can put something to JSON LD and say, oh, this is all this information, but your page is gonna be about something else. That's no good. Google will actually give you a penalty for that, right? So don't, don't do it. Um, and then this is for the featured snippet result, right? Which is implicit. Um, we have a featured snippet result. It's terrible. Uh, we got it by accident. We weren't even trying. Uh, but Google will uh, uh, surface featured snippet results into voice queries most of the time um, and provide an answer uh, that sometimes just will not make sense. A few tips for schema and again, uh, sorry, for, for feature snippets. And again, Sarah will cover this in more detail right after me. Uh, schema markup is not required to get a feature snippet. Uh, properly structured content, H1, H2, UL, OL, list items, important. Uh, increase the overall quality of your website. Better rankings equals more featured snippets. Feature snippets are derived from websites that are quality and are already ranking on the first page. Uh, uh, somewhere on the first page of Google. Uh, use high quality images. Keep the image close to the to the piece of content that be, that's being surfaced for the featured snippet. Here we see a, uh, a a result, a featured snippet result, where the content is being pulled from one side, but the 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 image is from YouTube. Uh, our instinct is to click on the image right away, right? So this guy is not getting the traffic that he optimized for. It's going to YouTube. So if you want don't want to lose traffic. Uh, at the image, make it high quality, put it next to the snippable piece of content. Uh, feature snippet results continued. Uh, so H2s are typically pulled in as titles. Uh, H3s can be used for list items, but Google prefers uh, list items, actual list, you know, markup for list items. Um, Google tends to like feature snippets that are less than 50 words in length, uh, and you can have multiple feature snippets derived from the same page. Um, here are some links for featured snippet results, um, some studies that were done. Glenn Gabe did a really awesome presentation, SMX, in 2017. Uh, still very relevant information, uh, really easy to understand and read. 40% um, of all voice search results are, are coming from featured snippet. The rest is coming from explicit results. Uh, again, content should be properly marked up and high quality images. Don't forget about that. That's, that's a big problem. Um, for this kind of result, so for the local pack result, this is also an explicit uh, uh, result. And this is where we're asking Google where to buy, right? And this is where Google pulls this information from. And that's from your Google My Business listing. Uh, and this is local SEO 101. How many of you are like local businesses, plumbers, appliance guys? There you go. There we go. So this is important for you guys. Um, verify Google My Business listing. Populate proper relevant categories. Include links to your website. Uh, make sure your hours information there because your listing will show as it's closed. Make sure your NAP name, address, phone number is consistent across all of your entries and citations. Get reviews from customers, super important, and you'll see why in a second. Um, and uh, high resolution imagery because it's going to show up all over the place. And it's going to be in the knowledge graph also. So here are some more tips for this, and this is getting a little deeper. So if we're going to search for do some, a complex query like uh, uh, asking Google, where can I get my Samsung phone repaired near LAX, right? So how is Google going to pull that up? So we have to make sure that we, we have an FAQ page that's actually marked up, right? Frequently asked questions. And there's markup, schema markup for FAQ, because that's going to go into the knowledge graph also. Uh, content should cater to near someplace searches, so like near LAX, right? You need want to have content on your page that talks about you being near LAX. Uh, you want to actually list the brands, Samsung. You don't want to just put up an image of the brands that you work with. You want to actually list them. Um, you want to add important information that your potential clients might be interested in, like free estimates, same day service, return policy, free parking, right? All of that gets picked up and it's used to retrieve you as the relevant result. Um, we also have something that was introduced by Google for, again, for people who don't want to optimize, just want to pay to play. Again, this is for, for service providers. It's not available in all cities, but basically this is a part of Google local search ads. 
uh, and you can pay to play to be in the voice results. So you, this is for plumbers, appliance guys. Uh, um, there's a link for you guys there. Take a look at it. And it basically just interviews you through the voice assistant or search assistant and uh, um, puts you in touch with a verified partner. We're almost done, guys. Still with me? Uh, you ready for some SEO tips? Yeah? I can't hear you. Come on. Come on. Yeah. We were clapping. We were loud. There we go. All right. Whoa. All right. So if you're not HTTPS, you suck. <laughs> go HTTPS, like now. Make your site fast. Do it again. Make it even faster. Um, this is still for 2018 and 2019. Write simple to read content. No one likes big words, you nerds. Okay, don't 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 try to sound smart. Uh, easy to read, easy to understand. Uh, voice search is growing in popularity. Get on it. Don't miss out. Optimize for the user. Better UX, better SEO. Don't optimize for search engines. Optimize for your users. Schema markup. We talked about it. Uh, speakable markup is coming, so we can actually apply schema markup around parts of our page that we say that. Uh, a, a part of our page that we want to, to be part of the speakable result, right? It's still pending, it's not there yet, but it's coming soon, keep an eye on that. Uh, spend more time on topics and less on keywords. And the whole kind of like overarching theme of this presentation is to get away from thinking of keywords and to start thinking about topics and entities, right? No strings, do things, right? Get away from, from, from optimizing for specific keywords. Think of topics, and think of how these topics are related to each other as far as entities are concerned. Um, Google is searching on, on uh, Google is focusing on search intent. And we can see that again based on how results are being served up, right? So when I asked where to buy it, who is it, right? Google understands what results I'm looking for. So Google is getting much better in it at understanding search intent. So spend some time thinking about that. I, I have another point on that later. Um, Optimize your entities. We talked about that. Um, we are mobile first now. Have you guys been getting your no notifications from Google Search Console? Yes, right? Uh, uh, is your site mobile ready? Make sure that it is. Does your mobile site show the same content as your desktop site? Make sure that it does, because Google, if you have shortened content on your mobile version, Google will rank you based on that content. It's not going to revert back to desktop, right? Uh, and this is the other point that I was trying to make. Focus on understanding your audiences, their journey, their decision-making process, their fears, uncertainties, and doubts, and how they relate to your product, service, or topic. And once you start thinking this way and you start addressing that right on the page for the content that you're trying to produce and to amplify and to market, you're going to start winning. That's it, guys. I'll open it up for questions. But I uh, I'm very new to the Word uh, WordPress space and coming over from Shopify. And one of the things that I that I kind of agree with the rationale for doing that is it seems like WordPress is a lot better for SEO than Shopify. Um, you obviously have a lot more experience. Do you have any suggestions on that? Do you think you can SEO Shopify just as well as WordPress or Yes. Um, two different beasts, right? So uh, Shopify is e-commerce, WordPress is not, right? You, you can't just create WordPress into e-commerce. You need to have some like WooCommerce, uh, some sort of an add-on, right? So it's two different platforms. A uh, few things I don't like about Shopify. Uh, you're locked into their platform. I have, don't have, as an SEO, don't have access to their log files. So I can't see how, which, which, which like user agents and which bots are visiting which pages and how, the, what responses the site gives to them. Um, the other reason I don't really like Shopify is that it forces you into specific topical silos like collections and products. Uh, and then out of the box, it puts products into a collections uh, silo, which then canonicalizes the, the product URL back to the product, uh, uh, the, the, from that silo into the product silo, which when Google looks at the site, looks like you have a big chunk of your site that's canonicalized, right? So as an SEO, I'm not happy with Shopify, but we work around it and we're still able to rank it. It's, it, is, it has its negatives, but it also has a lot of its positives. So what's your favorite like, e-commerce solution? WooCommerce? Or I don't support any of them. Uh, Big Commerce, Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, Magento, uh, Miva, whichever one you want to go with. Uh, um, it's what's going to fit your needs, right? A lot of people go with Shopify because of its social integration, like the, shop, the, the social shopping parts. And a lot of people like don't care about that there's no log files, right? I care about that, so I'm not going to go to Shopify.
Go ahead. Are you asking about websites like uh, like uh, Smugmug? Like, no. no, no, no. no. I'm talking about like, for instance, one of my clients is a third-party bag company, and it's all about the bidding for. Oh, so they're e-commerce. They're e-commerce, yeah. Okay, yeah. You definitely want to uh, use some sort of a, a, a CDN. You want to compress those images. Yeah. yeah, speed is important, especially mobile. Take a look at your. So in analytics, you can go into and Renee will probably be better to 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 answer that, but to say that. Uh, but uh, and he's speaking later on analytics. So if you guys want to stay uh, stick around after Sarah, he's going to be talking about analytics. Uh, take a look at your analytics. There's a way to see, and Renee will tell you later where to, where to go for it. You can actually see which pages uh, perform how against other pages on your site in terms of speed, and that way you can pinpoint like the 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 ones that are bad, right? And work on those, nip those in the butt. Uh, but yeah, generally you want to compress them. You want to have a nicely nice and fast loading site. Um, at the same time. Don't go like super crazy because it's it's uh, last thing I as far as I remember Google said that it's this whole speed thing only applies to sites that are like super slow right so try to get it as fast as possible it's obviously in your advantage but don't like you know go crazy and that's what we tend to do as well as SEO experts yeah. try to balance that what's best for Google versus what's best for absolutely user. yeah yeah okay. go ahead. I'm assuming it's a beacon. It's a beacon. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's playing in with. Are you doing any like a uh, uh, paid marketing on the local side? We were going to. I should assume it's an enticement, but for privacy too. Uh, yeah, I think it's a beacon. Uh, uh, a beacon. I'm I'm not too sure of how they're gonna work with it. I haven't dealt with it much. Play with what you're I would assume because it's Google, everything's gonna play together. But I, I can't really speak on it. I'm, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead. Hey. Just kind of a random question. Yeah. Uh, regarding explicit and implicit. Yeah. And when we do searches in general for stuff, you know, whether it's fake news or whether yeah. it's um, something that we want, you know, to understand better and do we rely on your source? You know, there's a lot of people uh, you tell them, hey, I found this on Wikipedia, they're like, well, that's Wikipedia. Yeah. You know? But so when you talk about explicit results, um, is there some sort of yeah so uh, for an entity for an entry to become explicit it needs to be verified somehow right so like think about like uh, example of google my business right uh like i can pick your house and say that my office is there right but then google's going to call and google's going to put a card in the mail to verify that i am there right so that's how it becomes kind of explicit right uh, so again, I can make an entry into Wikipedia. They're very good at patrolling their their entries, right? And then the listings get taken down all the time, but they're verified. You have to have sources for everything that you're putting up there, right? Sources that are accurate, trusted sources. So you can't just say, "Oh, I wrote this on my personal blog that I am the founder of Facebook, and now you know use it as a source for Wikipedia." Google's going to say, "Screw you, man! This doesn't make sense, right?" You would consider Wikipedia explicit. Yeah. That's, I mean, Google pulls from that, right? It's not what I consider, it's what Google considers, right? Google pulls information from there. We as SEOs looking like, oh, look, it's pulling from Wikipedia. Let's get everybody into Wikipedia, right? Uh, uh, but yeah, so like Wikipedia, IMDb, Google My Business, uh, uh, Wikidata, uh, there's, there's a lot of them, right? We really don't know. So really cool thing you guys can do, uh, and I don't have it in the slide, but so you can actually see how Google treats your name if you're an entity or not. So. Uh, uh, just Google search for uh, uh, Google API Explorer, and then go in there and click on the knowledge graph, and then there's a search box there that you can put your name in, and it's gonna return just like really ugly results that are just like code. But what you wanna look for is your name. Now, unless you're like, your name is, is Will Smith, right? Then you definitely have an, <laughs> it's Will Smith's ent ent entity number in there. But Google assigns a unique ID to every entity in the knowledge graph, right? So if you have an entity uh, ID, in that result from that API, 
that means that Google already has classified you as an entity, and that will be your ID with Google like forever. Any other questions? Go ahead. Sure, super important. Google does a much better job right now policing the quality of the link, right? So they're not giving out, they're not as happy uh, <laughs> giving out uh, penalties anymore or manual actions. Uh, and they do a really good job at filtering out, uh, 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 sh pardon my shitty links, right? Uh, uh, they, they don't take action against you, but they just don't pass any authority through it, right? So you're not getting any, anything out of it. Obviously, if you're like constantly building Fiverr links, don't do it. Um, you're going to get in trouble. First of all, you're not going to rank, you're spending your money for no reason. And then at one point, Google's going to be like, screw this guy, right? He sucks. So uh, local businesses, do a lot of outreach to your local, like, local business around you. Sponsor a school, donate some money. You'll get links out of it, right? Uh, uh, network, be awesome around other people and build those links. Uh, don't go chasing links. Actually do things to get them, right? Uh, if you're a blogger, if you're a writer, uh, a really awesome thing that we've done in the agency is we perform a search. So thing that we've done, we have a post on our site. Again, Sarah's going to link to it in her presentation. But it was, a, no, no, not that one. <laughs> Sorry. So Neil Patel wrote, who knows Neil Patel? Screw that guy. Um, <laughs> he sucks. Um, so he steals people's content. Uh, so he, he's one of his writers not him, wrote a really long post about, uh, uh, um, yeah, it was what to do before you hit publish, right? Uh, uh, it was like how to optimize your blog post. And it was like 6,000 something words, right? So what we did is we took it and we actually turned it into an infographic, right? We took his long ass boring post and we turned it into an infographic, published it on our site. And then I reached out to him and said, hey man, we published it in like, no response, right? But then we shopped it around and actually got links from like Huffington Post and other places, right? Uh, we've done this for other clients and it works very well. So like if you're in an industry where you can find some really interesting information, source that information, especially from like sites that are like EDU or some, like, somebody who published really accurate, interesting information on it and doesn't get too much love, love for it, right? Create an asset around it, publish it, reach back out to that person and say, hey man, really enjoy what you wrote, made an asset out of it, here's an embed code, put it on your site, now you got a link, right? So by being awesome, you're getting links. Any other questions? That's it. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>